Okay, so I am uh, uh, have a lot of stuff that I want to cover in this particular video, and I'm kind of going by the seat of my pants, so hopefully I get everything in here, uh, and it won't be too disorganized, but we'll just see how it goes. So, FreeMAT and Octave can perform basic operations pretty much the same way that a TI-83 or 84 does, just like if you have 8 plus 3, hit enter, and that gives you 11. Um, 22 over 7, that gives you a, a bad approximation of pi. Um, and uh, it can handle parentheses and exponents as well. So like if we have 3 plus 4 over 8, okay, so that's 0 .8750. But notice that's not the same thing as 3 plus 4 over 8 because of these parentheses right here. Uh, and there are also built-in functions like exp is going to be um, e to the whatever. So like exp of 4, that's going to be e to the 4th. Or you can have... Um, uh, other built-in functions like sine of 2 times pi over 3. And notice that pi, this pi right here, is the constant pi, just like you might expect. Uh, in octave and free mat, E is also Euler's constant, but in MATLAB, unless they've changed it recently, you actually need to do EXP1 to get Euler's constant. So that's something to keep in mind when you're using MATLAB you need to use exp of 1 to get Euler's constant, not just e. So, now I want to go ahead and uh, discuss one of the options. If I did format um, long, and then I did 22 over 7, that gives me a much longer version of 22 over 7. Um, by default, freemat, I think, does format short. Um, octaves default is a little bit more complicated than just short, just so you know. Uh, and in octave, but not free mat, if you type in just format and hit enter, then it will um, then it will reset the default value. It doesn't do that in free mat. Um, that's just one small difference between free mat and octave. Now if you want to hide the output of something, you actually put a semicolon at the end. Uh, so that hides the output of your calculation. And uh, th that becomes very, very important later um, whenever we're going to be writing functions. And note that if you're used to maxima, that's the opposite of maxima, because if you're in maxima, a semicolon means you want to show the output, not that you want to hide it. Also note that free mat and octave um, can do complex arithmetic. So if I want to do 3 plus 4i over 7 minus 2i, okay, well it does that with no problem. Um, so it can do complex arithmetic. That's actually very important um, when it comes to numerical analysis. Also, when you hit the up key, hit the up and down key, so if I hit up, that brings me to this input. Up again, brings me to this input. Up again, 22 over 7, hit down, brings me back to 7 plus 9, down again, brings me back to this. So that's so that you could cycle through your previous entries. Uh, it can be very, very convenient sometimes. Um, oh, also, exponents. You can do exponents with no problem. I think that's about all that I want to do. So I've covered functions, exponents. Um, pi is the constant pi. Uh, there's probably other constants as well that, I, that just don't are escaping me at the moment. Now, and I said how you want to hide the output. Okay, now, let's talk about assignments. Um, so, remember, well, I don't, wanna, I don't want to reference too much of Maxima, actually. But if you say you, you have something complicated, like you just did some kind of a strange, and, and that's the um, operation, um, uh, something odd, and you don't want to, you don't want to have to remember that, so you do a equals. That's going to set a equal to this value. So this 12.76 is going to be equal to a. Whenever I do, um, whenever I output a, it's going to give me 12.76. If I want to do something with a, I can go ahead and do that too. Uh, and you can also notice that if I don't assign a to something, then it's automatically assigned to a and s. And, okay, so let's say I have a is equal to 1. 
I can actually reassign A using A. So let's say I can do A equals A plus 1. So that gives me A equals 2. Do that again, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, and you can see that uh, in FreeMAT over here on the left side, uh, in this variables box, it tells me all the variables that I have available. So let's add some more variables. And now I have several variables in this uh, in this variable box. Now, if I were using um, Octave, then I would actually I wouldn't have this this variable box. So instead, I'd want to look at all of the variables using this command, HWOS. Uh, I just call it Who's in my head, and it tells me all of the uh, variables that are assigned to different. Um, uh, values. Well, I say variables. They're not really variables. They're assignments. Now, if I want to delete one of these, I can do clear space A. Oops, I did. Oh, and, and it turns out in FreeMAT, whose and who is the same thing. It's not the same thing in, in Octave. So I cleared A, and it gave it deleted A. If I want to clear everything, I just type in clear. It clears everything except for A and S in uh, Octave, it'll delete A and S too. Now, the thing that's really used all the time um, in Octave and FreeMAT is matrices. So let's say I have uh, I want to solve this right here. See if I can make this uh, always on top. Always on top, yeah. So, ooh, let's see if I can so what I want to do here so I want to make sure you can see it so what I want to do here is uh, I want to solve this system of equations AX equals B so um, to enter a matrix I'll go ahead and do A equals you don't have to but it's, it's uh, easiest to do that and I want to go ahead and do 1 plus 7i and to go to the next entry, to go to this entry, I could either do a comma and do 8 or I could do a space and do 8. Works the same way either way. And then I go ahead and go to 0. Okay, So that completes the first row. To go to the next row, I do a semicolon. And then I go ahead and do 6, 1, 7 plus i, semicolon to go to the next row. 8 minus 5i or 9. Close bracket. So this will show me the um, this will give me matrix A and it shows uh, all of the imaginary parts too even if they're 0. Uh, and now, so that's A, now let's set B equal to 5 oops, that would be a 7. 5, 7, 2. Oops, but I want to do semicolons to make sure I get a column vector. Now, to do AX equals B, I'll do A um, backslash B, and it'll give me the result. Uh, so that's something that you'll be using quite a bit, uh, probably if you're in a numerical analysis class. You'll probably learn diff many different ways to do matrix division. Uh, they don't really call it matrix division. Um, but that is sometimes called left left uh, division. So that's a way to do um, way to enter matrices. Now I want to talk about a few different functions of matrices. So let's say I want to just come up with a random matrix of, of real values between 0 and 1. I can do random R-A-N-D 4 by 4. That'll give me a random matrix, um, all real numbers between 0 and 1. So I'll go ahead and do, uh, let's go ahead and do C this time. That's what I was, yeah, let's go ahead and do C this time. C is random 4 by 4. Um, actually, let's make it a 3 by 3. That way I can go ahead and multiply A times C, and I get this new matrix. 
So that's matrix multiplication. Or if I want to do scalar multiplication, I'll do 3 times C, and that will give me that. Um, now, if I want to find the transpose of a matrix, I do transpose and pr then in um, parentheses A. Now that's different from the adjoint. Remember that the adjoint of a matrix, of a complex valued matrix, is going to be you transpose it and then find the complex conjugate. That's also going to be important in numerical analysis. And to find the adjoint, you actually do apostrophe. So like A apostrophe, that gave me the adjoint, so when you compare that to, well, actually, when you compare, th this is the transpose of A up here, this is the adjoint of A. Notice that it's the same thing, except that the imaginary part sign is flipped for all of them. Um, and down here, this is just the original A. So, um, that's the difference between transpose and adjoint, and how you find them both. Now, if I want to find the inverse of A, Okay, I can't do that in Fremat. In in Octave, you can do it that way, but you could probably do it this way. A to the power of negative 1, that will give me the inverse of A. And if I do that, times A, I'll get the identity matrix. Um, so, let's say I want to do, um, I want to, oh shoot, what's the word? <laughs> I can't think of the word now. This that's really bad. Um, augment. That's it. Augment a matrix. Um, a and B. So now that gave me. Let's go ahead and do C instead. That'll that'll. Uh, so what I did was I this these two matrices have to have the same. Um, have to have the same row dimension for this to work and I just did C space B so that's going to augment C and B together remember that C was this part and B was this part so that gave me the new matrix M and if I wanted to find reduced row echelon form of M that will give me that or then and notice that this is going to be the same thing as C backslash uh, B now, if I wanted to, let's say I have two lists, and by lists I mean um, matrix um, matrices that only have one row. No, uh, no other rows. You could have several columns, but only one row. Uh, I didn't actually mean for that to be multiples of another, but it doesn't matter. Um, so if I have A equals that, and I already have a B, let's make a lowercase c. Notice that this is case sensitive. It's like that for all three MATLAB, Octave, and FreeMAT. Okay, so I have A and C. Now notice if I do try to do A times C, that doesn't work because it thinks it's doing matrix multiplication and the arguments um, aren't compatible. The dimen dimensions aren't compatible. Well, what if I want to do every element in A times every element in C? Uh, well, that I can do a period star c. So that just gave me 3 times 1, 6 times 8, and 9 times 2. Uh, I see a lot of people have a lot of problems when they're using MATLAB because they don't, uh, they have this problem. <laughs> and that's actually important to be able to do that uh, correctly. So, that, um, I have some other things that I want to cover. The norm, if I do norm of A, that gives me the two norm of A, or I can do of a uh, the two norm of a matrix as well. If I want to find the identity matrix, so that's the three by three identity. It's actually E Y E. I don't know why they did E Y E instead of I D, but um, it's like that for all three of them: FreeMAT, Octave, and MATLAB. EYE3 will give you the matrix. So if you do EYE of 3 times B, that'll just give you the same thing as B, because when you multiply it, you'll get the same thing. Or EYE A, or that's not right, 3 times A, that'll just get you A. Um, 
something that's similar to EYE, um, you can do ones, four by five, that'll give you a four by five matrix of ones, or if you just put in one number, you'll get a four by four of ones, or zeros, same thing. Now, um, I don't think there's like a threes. Yeah, that's not a function, but you'd instead do three times um, ones like that to get a matrix of threes. And I've already dug, done augment, augmenting matrices. And now I want to do making lists. Now there's a way you can make lists. Um, like let's say if I want to make a list from zero to ten. So I'll say x equals, then I'll start at zero, colon, one, colon, ten. That's going to make a list from zero. Here's a starting point, step one, um, up to ten. So that means x is from zero up to ten. And uh, it's, uh, similarly, if I want to do x equals zero, at step of point one, up to two, that's going to give me from zero to two at steps of point one. So it's going to be zero, point one, point two, point three, point four, all the way up to two. Or if I want, so that changes the value of the step, but if I want to say go down, I'll do ten to zero in steps of negative one. So that will make me go down from ten to zero. Now let's say I want to make a list uh, 0 at steps of point 0.3 up to pi. Now it's not going to end at exactly pi, of course, because it's, um, pi is not a multiple of point 0.3. Um, now I want to find the value of sine of each of these points. So I just do sine of x, and it finds the value of each of these. All right, um, I know that probably seemed very fast and strange, but um, it's th those are the most basic parts of MATLAB and Octave, so I hope that was helpful to you, and um, I'll see you in the next video.